Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. I thought I would come on and record a small series based on a reel that I did a few weeks ago, which was all the different elements that helped me to lose weight. And I wanted to start off with uh, this video in particular because this is the essence of how you lose weight. And that is by being in a consistent calorie deficit. So this is how everybody loses weight, no matter whether you are doing body slims like me or Weight Watchers or Slimming World or following no program at all. That is how you lose weight. What I mean by calorie deficit is that you consume less calories than your body needs for energy. Therefore, it has to get that energy from another source. And what we wanted to do is to get it from your fat stores. And that is how you lose weight, is that you're eating less calories than you need for your energy and your body triggers uh, the release of energy from your fat cells. And that is how basically you lose weight. And by doing that consistently, that means that those fat cells get shrink, they shrink, and uh, you start to lose weight. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about here is calorie limits. Now, I personally don't discuss my calorie limit, as I have said before, purely because that is my calorie limit for myself. But how it was set for me was through the program Body Slims that I do, and then I okayed it with my GP or my doctor. I am not a dietitian, I am not a GP, I'm not a medical professional, and I want you to know that any of the information that I give you is not an alternative for medical advice. And I would always, always recommend before you embark on a journey like this, like a weight loss journey or a fitness journey, that you engage with your GP, you discuss it with them, discuss your calorie limit, and or maybe a dietitian as well, and make sure that you are okay to do so. I did that because I have a heart murmur and I wanted to make sure that what I was doing, because I was morbidly class three obese when I started, that I wasn't gonna hurt my heart in any way. So my calorie limit has been okayed by my GP. And how I got that then was through my program called Body Slims. But there's other ways that you can set your calorie uh, limit. And I'm gonna talk about two of those which I have tried before and done before. Um, so your calorie limit, I should say, is calculated by working out your total daily uh, energy expenditure, so, or your TDEE. And that's basically the number of calories that you need to consume to function on a daily basis. That's not to lose weight, it's not to put on weight, it's to maintain you as a human being. So that's the calories you need for sleeping, for breathing, for uh, moving about, for lifting a finger, all of that requires some kind of energy. So if you think of like coal going into a, an old steam train, you need to put energy in order to, for it to go. You need energy and we typically get our energy from food. So, for your TDE, there's two ways that can be calculated that I have tried other than getting your calorie limit from a program. The first is that you can go and have an actual TDEE test done. I have had this done and basically you go to wherever it may be, depending on what country. I went to a consultant who was working out of a gym. He hooks you up to a breathing apparatus and basically you breathe into that I think it's for 10 to 20 minutes they calculate your TDEE and then they recommend what deficit um, what like how to reduce your calories down then I think at the time uh, my calorie my TDEE was about 2,000 500 to 2700 to maintain me so in theory to reduce down to 2000 and be in a constant calorie deficit of 2000 i should have lost weight however i didn't have the psychological um know how to do it at that point so that's coming up in a, a different video uh, so that's the first way that you can do it other than a program and the second way is that you can just use a website there are many, many websites out there or an app like um, MyFitnessPal and they will calculate for you your TDEE and then you reduce that percentage down. Okay, then for me on a daily basis, how I eat and how I live is I practice uh, intermittent fasting and that's for other reasons than reducing calories. It's because of my history of food addiction and binge eating disorder, which I'll go into in another video. But basically that means that when I wake up, I wake up typically between five and half six every single morning. I go out for my hour long walk. 
I drink water and when I come back I have coffee and then at 12 o'clock I will start to eat. I like to break my fast, which is where breakfast comes from, the term, with a really abundant and healthy salad typically and it's full of vegetables it's full of nutrients and that just gives me a good pep in my step and some good energy to sustain me i'll typically have something on the side like vegan bacon and cheese uh, vegan cheese um or some bread with vegan cream cheese and that's just because i like those things um, and that's what i like to eat around three to five o'clock i'll probably get a little snacky and i'll want to have something else to eat i will typically have um either some tofu or i will eat like a breakfast bar or something like that just to to give me a bit of energy and then we will eat between five and seven o'clock um as i should say or it's probably a bit obvious now but i am a vegan um i eat a fully plant-based diet and I try to eat from the whole foods plant-based section, but I do eat some processed vegan food. Then after dinner, I will probably have some kind of dessert because I like something sweet. It might be fruit, it might be blueberries and peanut butter, it might be um, a soy dessert from Alpro, um, it could be a little chocolate, something that just keeps me, uh, just gives me a little sweet tooth. I track every single thing that I eat on my fitness pal and that is the app that I choose to use and I weigh everything uh, before I eat it every single thing it might seem like it's a little bit difficult um, or time consuming but it's in no way near as time consuming as being overweight and um, that's the honest truth I've put together a list of seven different tips that are based around how I stay in a consistent calorie deficit and some of the ways that I make life easier or some of the extras that I do and just the things that I that I would really recommend but you don't have to do them this is just what I do so the first of all is that you don't have to eat your entire uh, calorie limit I have followed the body slims program now for three cycles of it and one of the things that Jared, the guy who runs it, says is that your cal it's a calorie limit, not a target. Say you eat for the day, as I have, ex have just explained, as I do, and then you realize you've got 100 calories left of your for before you get to your calorie limit. You don't have to eat those calories. That's something um, that I've learned. Whereas before, I would have been like, oh, I have to find something that fits in exactly that 100 calories and I have to eat that. Actually, you don't have to eat it. If you are satisfied, you feel that you have eaten enough food, you're not feeling hungry, you don't have to eat it. You just don't. You don't have to go all the way to your calorie limit. That's something that I think I was like, oh my God, of course, you don't have to go to your calorie limit. It makes a lot of sense now. But, you know, I could be sitting there and I could go... I have realized I have 100 calories left for the day and I'm like, oh, well... I've got two chocolates in the fridge that could work. Is that going to bring me closer to my goal or is that going to keep me where I am? If I really, really want those chocolates, I'm going to eat them. But I can go, no, I'm probably satisfied. I don't need to eat those right now. And I am continue on my merry way because I've eaten good food through the day that has satisfied me within my calorie limit. So that's tip number one. Number two is to weigh everything as you eat it. It's really, or before you eat it, it's really, really important to weigh. The only thing that I don't weigh are liquids and I use a measuring jug for liquids. I would show you, except I broke my measuring jug last week. So I'm using measuring cups, which have milliliters on them at the moment, but it's not ideal. So basically one of the examples I would give would be peanut butter that I eat regularly as a dessert. A tablespoon of peanut butter and the weight of a pe of peanut butter, because it's so calorie dense, there can be a huge discrepancy. So I would always recommend weighing food over a measuring jug or um, um, measuring with uh, tablespoons or with um, with cups. And for liquids, I find that I use so for when i'm making my coffee in the morning i will use a measuring cup with a milliliter measuring indicator on it because i have tried weighing 
liquids before and there's a big discrepancy there between the um between the the calories basically so i find because of the density of different liquids um i find it harder to it's not as accurate if you weigh your liquids so weigh your solid foods and measure your liquids that's tip number two tip number three is log it as you got it so as you're eating something, make sure you're recording it in whichever app or whatever means that you want to record, whether it be pen and paper, or I personally choose my fitness pal. I've been using it for six, seven years. So I have a really good database built up with it, um, but which I know a lot of people use different apps. And if you're following a program, there might be an app with that, but I would highly suggest it logging it as you gob it so that you don't forget anything that you eat and you don't accidentally eat 300 calories more. Tip number four is to fill your body with abundance. I like to eat from primarily a plant-based whole food diet. So as I said, I tend to break my fast with a large salad and my salad is filled with raw vegetables. And that gives me a lot of nutrients. It gives me a lot, it gives me good calories um, and it just makes me feel very full and satisfied. And I know that I feel like I've eaten something really good and I'm not weighed down or I'm not feeling sluggish or lethargic after food. Tip number five is to season everything. You might think, oh my God, broccoli is so boring, but broccoli with Chinese five spice is freaking delicious. It is so, so good. Utilize herbs, spices, seasonings, and make your food that might seem really boring, really tasty. You can take a very simple stir fry and you can use a completely different range of spices from Monday to Tuesday. And you can have, even though it's the exact same ingredients, like your vegetables or your meat or your tofu or whatever it is that you're eating, by seasoning it differently, you create a completely different dish. I love to add spices and herbs and the other kind of um, other ingredients that are not very calorie dense, but that have a huge impact. And for me, it's chili flakes, fresh chilies, garlic, spring onions, Chinese five spice. Um, they are like up there with things that I add to my food that just makes it taste out of this world. And it's very low in ad added calories. I also like to use seasoning mixes, but please be careful when you're using a seasoning mix because some of them can have added sugar in them or added milk if you are vegan um, or if you are lactose intolerant, there can be milk added into some seasonings. So always check the labels. That's really, really important. Tip number six is to watch out for hidden calories. So, if you are reading, this is why it's so important to read all of your, uh, the labels on everything is because sometimes it might like on the, the front, it might say, oh, this is only 42 calories. And you're like, oh my God, it's 42 calories for this box. No, it's not. It's 42 calories for two of the thing that there's 15 in it. You know, food manufacturers don't want, they're not trying to trick us, but they don't want to say, you know, this is really, really high in calories. So they might show that a portion is a lot less than you think it would be. Yeah, so I would always, always read the labels and watch out for hidden calories. That's the same one as I was mentioning with the seasoning mix, all of a sudden you can be eating something that you think has no calories in it and it turns out it's got like 200 extra calories in it. And my seventh and final tip is to find foods that you enjoy eating. When you're dieting or losing weight, you don't have to eat food that tastes like crap. You don't have to, you can eat food that is delicious. You can choose to eat Oreo cookies, or you can choose to eat broccoli. Whatever you like, you can eat it, so long as it's in your calorie limit. That's what's really important. Composition is important. By composition, I mean what makes up your food. Obviously, like from all the major food groups, it should be really important. However, the main thing is that you are in that calorie deficit. 
that is how you lose weight. Finding things that you like to eat that are within that calorie deficit and understanding that you don't always have to be stuffed. You can be satisfied and eating and paying attention to what you're eating and enjoying what you're eating really helps and helped me to make sure that I stayed within a calorie deficit and that it wasn't a difficult and onerous task to do. So guys, that is my just a little handy video, well, a long video um, about how I stay in a consistent calorie deficit. And I know I didn't cover everything here, but if I did, I'd probably be here for two or three hours and I don't think anyone wants to watch me um, for two or three hours. So um, if I've forgotten anything, I might stick it into the comments because that always happens when I'm recording something like this and then I go to edit it and I'm like, oh, I forgot that. So there might be something else in the comments. Make sure you read them. Um, and yeah, I'm just, uh, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned because the next video in this series will be about my... Uh, mental health journey and how therapy helped me to lose weight. Okay. Thanks everyone. Bye